I was actually relieved to finally get a name. Relieved to finally have a diagnosis, but terrified but by what that diagnosis would mean. Leslie Crummel is now one of roughly 30,000 people nationwide fighting ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. She first had to advocate for herself and then went on to advocate for all ALS patients. WHO 13's Lindsay Burrell shows us how. Leslie Crummel's journey to her ALS diagnosis involved a year of doctor's appointments, blood tests, screenings, and unwavering perseverance. I had to do a lot of pushing and self-advocacy because it's rare and they don't believe you have it, you know. Diagnosed in 2018, Leslie first learned about the disease just four years earlier when she took part in the viral ice bucket challenge. I had no idea what ALS was. I had to look it up. And four years, years later, I was diagnosed. A diagnosis that transformed her life in an instant. I was actually relieved to finally get a name even though I had already figured it out for myself. But it was like, okay, now we know what we have to fight. She wasn't just going to sit back and, and let it take its course because they gave us three to five. Mm -hmm. they, give you, they gave us three to five years. That's the normalcy when you're diagnosed. With time passing by, Leslie's fight began just a month after her diagnosis, where she and fellow ALS advocates lobbied in Washington, D.C. for ALS funding. It was an eye-opener because I was functional yet. I was walking, talking, doing pretty much everything. Just slower, tripped a lot, and got out there and saw all kinds of people way more, you know, progressed than me. Seeing the reality of the road ahead, Leslie quickly connected with local resources, including the ALS Association of Iowa, which has supported her at every stage of her journey. You know, they come in and they, they take you by the hand, they walk you down through it. Right away said, you're going to need a power chair. So they started that process right away even though I didn't use it really up until last year full time. In addition to her advocacy work, Leslie has taken part in several clinical trials focused on discovering a cure for ALS. If there's a trial out there that they can experiment with, you know, we got to have people to do that. So um, she's not afraid to do that. We've been to different states and trials, Kansas and California, whatever she can to help uh, find a cure. And is open about her personal experiences to help others who share her diagnosis. When I was diagnosed, I'm like, I need support. I can't do this on my own. So I started a little Facebook group, private, and just said, hey, I have an appointment. Can you guys say a prayer? Um, just kind of kept them up to date on what was going on. And I would kind of write stories on there of just my experiences. Those stories, now compiled into two books, offer a behind-the-scenes glimpse into her daily life with ALS. It talks about us, you know, that what we're going down through. And, and uh, she puts a little, you know, her faith is major in all this. And uh, it ties in with all some of her stories too. So, but no, I, I have not made myself read it. I don't know if I could. Through the highs and lows, Leslie has found moments of normalcy. Before her diagnosis, she taught classes at the YMCA. Now she teaches virtually. They wouldn't let me quit, but they do listen. There's times where I wonder if I say, get on the floor for push-ups and they disappear on me. Oh, I don't yeah. know if they did them. In her personal life, Leslie travels with her family for vacations in Okaboji and even attended Super Bowl 58 with Team Gleason to cheer on the Kansas City Chiefs. We're very active and we still are. It just looks different. All while actively striving to discover a cure for a currently incurable disease.
Yeah. Did you, in the beginning of this process, when I'm sure it all felt very heavy and new and fresh, did you ever think that this is where you would be a handful of years later, a, a prime advocate in the state of Iowa? I mean, you don't think you're going to live more than two years. So to be here six years later is amazing. Reporting for WHO 13 News, I'm Lindsay Burrell. Leslie's advocacy continues as she will be participating in this weekend's Walk to Defeat ALS event at Prairie Meadows Hotel and Casino. You'll find all the details at WHO13.com.